And welcome back! <laughs> There's the VIB again. I haven't gone anywhere. You guys had to wait an extra day. I'm sorry about that. This is minor, minor inconveniences. You know, just kind of keeping you guys coming back for more. Let's go check out this here NASA tweet up tent. I really hope, they say that the tent is air conditioned. I, I hope it is because I they made me wear long pants to go on this tour today. So I wore long pants and it's gonna be a heat index of 108 today. That sounds like no fun. Ooh, the sun makes this hard to do, but that little square thingy right there, I'd point to it, but I got so much stuff in my hands. Uh, right there is the uh, the countdown clock. Look at all this jazz. It's like every every table has its own like power source. There's cameras everywhere, people everywhere. This is ridiculous. And computers everywhere. Check out these old NASA press site bathrooms. This looks pretty awesome. I was gonna show you the inside, but there was some guy in there that was doing something that may have been considered a little bit private. Just open. Quite a view, it's the old shuttle pad. And there's the other pad. You ever want a really close up shot of the countdown clock? I put a shot of the electronics on the inside. I think it's air conditioned. It's a backpack in the back. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Oh, it is an air conditioner. Look at that. Yeah. Either that or it's just dehumidifier. Back I don't know. Oh, wow. It's a lot of spark after you live. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see in there. They need to clean these things. <laughs> oh, there's a box in there. All right. Cardboard. You guys ready for a 365 degree view? There's all the, all the different news agencies hang out right here. Uh, mission control is those that that building with the windows on it. Here's our our nice tent. There's the bathrooms that I took you guys to. I guess A and T and T is there. I think that's one of them's old mission control. I don't know which one. Maybe that one over there. And then here's the the bleachers countdown clock. Uh, one of the launch pads. The other one's behind the clock. Oh, and this is the turn basin too, which is it's so aptly named because when they bring in the solid rocket boosters from C. They bring them in here and they need this big area so they can turn them around and unload them. Here we go, we're moving from here to the launch pad. Right there. So we are now moving our rocket carrying Juno. Juno is the, the satellite that's headed to Jupiter. Uh, over to the launch pad and you guys can kind of see it. There it is right there, vehicle assembly building. You can actually, or vehicle uh, integration facility, VIF. And you can actually see the rocket right there next to it, that little pointy thing. And then you see these, these towers over here, these three uh, four lightning rod towers. That's our launching pad. That's how far away it's going to be when we watch it. We'll be standing somewhere around here to watch it. In comparison to the shuttle pad, where is it? There's the building and the launch pad, and that's how far away the shuttle pad is, and then there's the other old shuttle pad that isn't used anymore. Well, neither of them is used anymore now, but that's where we would have watched the last shuttle launch from. Good news, bad news time, guys. Um, tomorrow, I have my second job interview with my, my dream job, and I'm supposed to be out here at NASA to do the, this tweet up thing here, but I'm going to go to the job interview and then try to get out here afterwards because the job is at 9 or 10. They said 10 first and they're like, well, maybe we can do it at 9. Hopefully they'll be able to do it at 9. They'll give me enough time to get out here for Bill Nye and to see the rocket launch. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. All right, lunch break. And they say that we're going to go on a tour now at 2 o'clock. It's like uh, 1 almost now. But they say that we get to go inside the vehicle assembly building and we might get to see Discovery because it's in there right now, which would be awesome. Dang, from up here, you can get a pretty good view of that rocket sticking up over the treetops right there. You see all those four towers? Right there. Uh, just right in the center of those is the rocket top. Rocket top sitting there po poking up. I'm old fashioned. I did, I did go over the emails, but that's about all I've done. Did you call it a tweet? Did you post on Twitter? Okay, a tweet. One of those stripes is wiped up for this bus to drive down. Really? The star is six foot in diameter. One of those stars. The blue background is the size of a uh, a basketball court. Just so you get some feel of how big the building is. 535 feet tall. Not quite as tall as the Washington Monument, but a little bigger. It sits on about seven acres of land. It was used for the Apollo program, and we transitioned it and started using it for the shuttle program. All right, welcome to the VAB. Let's do this. Wow, look at that. Excuse me. This is quite a large building. <laughs> yeah, right? It's better than the bus. Oh, a lot better than the bus. We worked on them in here, as well as the front end cones, which had the parachutes 
that took care of part of the uh, recovery system. This was used for that purpose. As you go past this low bay area, we'll come into the high bay area. On the top? That was a long time ago. <laughs> Do you know where your beam is? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I saw them host it up, but I never see it again. Cradle, and they hook up the, that me mechanism to it and pick it up vertically. The landing gear has already been retracted before it comes over. That wasn't true in the early days. The early sh shuttles, it came over on its landing gear. We had to pick it up, fire up the hydraulic systems in order to retract the gear, and then we had lifted it position. But we got a, a mechanism from uh, from Vandenberg Air Force Base when they decided not to use the shuttle, and we used it here now. The ET tank, which you see, is the first section over there, the external tank, but the hydro and liquid oxygen tank, they usually kept in the bays on the opposite side. I have no idea what any of that stuff is, but it looks awesome. Ooh, NASA dumpster. I signed it in the past year. I signed it too. It's over there. Well, you know where your signature is there. I know where my signature is there. I can see it. But I don't know where it is up there. It's got right down there. Down there? Yeah. Where's that? I like the news that he brings the discoveries in here. Every component that was made on any one of the uh, mobile launch platforms, whether it's Apollo or shuttle, has to go over that and come back down into a bay. Every component. So therefore, each one of the SRB segments has to be taken over the top, made it to the launch, mobile launch platform, and that's one in there. There's a mobile launch platform in there sitting on six posts. There's six posts out there also in the yard to store it on. There's six posts on the launch pad to set it on. So the crawler comes in, picks up the assembly, picks up this entire thing, along with the stack from the entire shuttle, and takes it out to the launch pad. Now a shuttle stacked in here is only about half the size of Apollo stacked in here. Apollo is twice the size of what you stack, one shuttle on top of the other. You pick it the vertical position. You gotta take it over that sill. Well, the wings are wider than the expansion, so it had to go over at an angle then get turned around inside and put back down and made it to the ET tank. The SRBs are stacked on the mobile launch platform. The ET tank is brought in and made it to the SRBs. The only thing holding the vehicle is the SRB, the solid rocket motor. Then the, e then the shuttle is brought in and made it to the ET tank. There's three points on the shuttle, one at the nose and two at the back end of it. That's the same three points it flies in on the 747, same three points they use to fly it in on the 747. Here's the goal in the Apollo program. We'd bring people in, and the elevators over here were glass elevators. And we'd take them up. As we went up, they'd be able to look at all the stack, the entire stack of the Apollo program. Then we'd take them across the top catwalk to the opposite side so they could look back over and see the Apollo. I had a group of congressmen with me, and we were bringing them over. And as we were bringing them over, it was an open catwalk. They're now closed. They're not before. And one of the ladies froze and would not move. He was about halfway across. Her husband went out to get her. He was a congressman. And she hauled off and walked him upside the head with her pocket. So I thought he was going to knock him down. And I went out there and I just looked at her and I said, when I take a step backwards, she's going to touch me. I said, I take a step backwards, you take a step forward. I got her off the platform. I never took anybody across that platform again. <laughs> My wife always said it was a little spooky for her. I never even thought about it. Here comes the big unveil. Look at that. There's Discovery. Wow. Look at how impressive this is. Wow. I need one on my This is it. Wow. No engines in there. It's like all gone. We don't need to leave here. But it looks amazing. This is like, there's just a fence in front of us, but this is the best I can get you of Discovery. It's 
crazy looking, right? If I keep moving a lot, you guys can't really see the fence so much. It is so impressive. That thing's been in space multiple times. Just think about that. What was what, what was launched off this tower, or what never got launched off this tower? Nothing ever got launched that off that tower. To what was it supposed right? to be for? Aries? Aries one. Is that the only one? Because weren't they refitting? I remember when I did that teacher tour, they were supposed to be refitting an actual shuttle launch pad for it. It's right over there. You can see the three towers sticking up for that one. Yeah, NASA bathrooms. It's impressive. The ground umbilical carrier plate. Right, it, kind of, it carries things like fuel into the external tank in this particular case. Oh, that's pretty foam, neat. Yeah, it's yeah. the foam. Yeah. Wow. There's a crawler. Man, a mobile launch pad over there. We call this OPF-2. You see the little slit there for the tail of the shuttle to go inside of it? I guess it's fair to say OPF is orbiter processing facility. Here's, here's Juno. And in between those two is SpaceX. There's Delta-4. Now, they call it Delta, but having worked on Delta-1, 2, and 3, it doesn't look a bit like Delta-1, 2, and 3. It's a total new vehicle. It turns out when the Air Force came here to start doing rocket testing, they didn't know what sort of facilities to build for rockets, so they built hangars. Yeah. And I checked out a number of rockets in these hangars. There's the Delta rocket all ready to go. It's pretty neat. It's a little baby rocket. A little bit closer view of it. We are on a military base, so of course you have to have uh, the volleyball net. Or else, what else would, would, uh, would Goose and, and those other guys from Top Gun do? I think it should be mentioned that we're on a bus with no air conditioning and they told us to wear long pants. Actually, the other bus didn't have it. They switched or something. They switched to a bus with air conditioning? Uh, why didn't we get to switch? Why didn't we get to switch? Oh goodness. This is what we are going to see tomorrow, just the stripped down part. They got the liquid kerosene that goes in here, and then liquid oxygen that goes in there, and then they all mix together right there where the engine is and shoots the rocket up, and they also have space. See this little bracket right here and this little bracket right here? You can put two solid rocket boosters that attach from here down to there on this side, and then there's three on the other side. This is brilliant. This is what is going to take our next uh, mission to Mars, our next satellite to Mars. Not this actually, this is just the rocket that shoots it up and then there's a payload that attaches to the top that's not there right now, but that will go to Mars. This is expendable. This goes away. Just so you guys can get an idea of the size of this thing. It is huge. There's our launch vehicle. That's what we're gonna see launch tomorrow. And there's the guy with the camera and the ladder. In all honesty, I probably should have just waited until we got outside to show you guys this thing. But there it is. You know how dang close we are to this rocket. Amazing. We're going to launch uh, the Juno mission out to Jupiter. We're going to launch it tomorrow morning. T0 is scheduled at 11:34 a.m. This morning at 8 o'clock, we rolled it from our Atlas V vertical integration facility, 1,880 feet, out to the launch mount there. We used uh, railroad cars. They actually go underneath our mobile launcher platform. They jack it up and then we push it out to the pad. After we uh, set it down, we bring those railroad cars back and put them in the vertical integration facility awaiting the launch. This is a 551 configuration, five meter diameter payload ferry, five solid rocket motors, one Centaur engine on it. It is uh, just shy of 200 feet tall, 197 feet tall. In Denver managed by uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California weighs about 8,000 pounds. About 5,000 pounds of that 8,000 pounds is propulsion and propulsion fluids, oxidizer and hydrazine for uh, orbit insertion, course correction maneuvers, and um, polar orbit adjustment at Jupiter. It launches on a hyperbolic trajectory orbit. It's basically an Earth escape orbit on its way to Mars. It does a flyby of Mars in about a, and comes back around to the Earth in about a year and does an Earth flyby for a gravity assist and a trajectory adjustment out to Jupiter. Here's the old shuttle pad. This is 39A. Nitrogen deck on side and hydrogen. Put them together and you get STS-1. When they had liftoff, the sound reverberated back on the flame bucket, back up and slightly bent the tail of the orbiter as well as knocked off some uh, uh, tiles. 
So we learned that we had to flow do something to cut down on that sound permeating back up. So we flow water across the launch pad. It goes through the MLPs, comes out on what we call what I call big rainbird, and sprays across the launch pad. And that stops that sound from coming right back up again. And this is the water towers that they come out of. Or that the water comes out of, I should say. Oh my goodness, sweet, sweet AC. It's going to be so awesome. Just letting the car air out, and then it's time for AC and maybe some ice cream. Because it is hot, and our bus didn't have air conditioning. And uh, I would imagine that it was hotter in the bus than it was outside, because there is no air conditioning. And it's like being inside of a tin can. It's like a greenhouse. That's what it's like. It's like being inside of a greenhouse. It's so hot. I'm like delirious. Taking you guys out by the visitor complex so you guys can see more rockets. There's my space shuttle mock-up. I've been inside that before. If you guys follow my videos, you'll know that is supposed to be able to be seen from space. And then there's the rocket garden. Yay, rocket garden, which I know you can see from Google Maps. Faux show. Faux show. Better view of rocket garden. Oh, it feels really good to finally get home and take a shower. So by the time you guys watch this, hopefully I will have made it through my interview with flying colors. I will have seen a rocket launch and uh, We'll be moving on to bigger and better things, so I'll see you guys tomorrow, and now it's time to pay the price.